Good day, my plan foldies. This is Richie at Girl Folds, and today we will be grocery store plan shopping at Kroger out in Frisco, Texas. As always, please make sure you guys are hitting the like button and um, subscribing to the channel. It really helps with my engagement, so I'll be able to get more content for you guys. I do post daily videos, one hour plan shopping videos for you guys, and I hope you guys will join the live premiere chat. So, this is a Kroger that I haven't been to in a while. Actually, um, this is my second time here, but I did want to point out this really cool looking um, philodendron black cardinal look at how large this is and this is by live trends i want to go ahead and set it down on the floor so you can see how beautiful the leaves are dark foliage leaves i believe this is for 2248 you can see that there is um you know there are there is another leaf unfurling and i do love the dark foliage love black plants i'm not a really big fan of the moss on top as a top um, cover but overall what a beautiful looking philodendron i like that it's um growth habit is not trailing it's more of a clumping uh, so it stays compact and the leaves get very large as well really like that um it's it, very interesting to see philodendron like this at a grocery store you wouldn't think to go into a grocery store to um, shop for plants but as I've stated in my previous videos, you can find plants for a very good price. Like this is a Dracaena marginata, and this one is in a four inch planter for $6.99. Not a bad price at all, as you can see. And you can see that um, this is a fairly healthy looking plant. Um, I will say that their merchandising at this particular Kroger isn't the best, but if you're looking for plants like this Philodendron Black Cardinal, this one is also for $6.99 in a 4-inch starter planter. Um, it's not a bad price at all. I, there is just a little bit of leaf damage, but you know, if you're looking for inexpensive plants, Kroger is a great place to um, plant shop, or most grocery stores um, have really good selections. They're usually in the floral department, um, and you can see there is another Philodendron black cardinal right over here there is a little bit of leaf damage as well um, but to be really picky you can see that there is a fake um, succulent type but to be picky I would say that the merchandising could be a little bit better this one is a Peperomia Rousseau um, this is actually sourced by Mason Farm so if you've seen a lot of my plant shopping videos at Kroger most of their plants are sourced out by Mason Farms which is a plant nursery out in New Mexico what a beautiful looking Peperomia Piccolo right over here for $13.99. Love the um, veination of the leaves. I love the dark foliage as well. That gray is very striking. And then right over here, we've got some Philodendron Pink Princess Marbles. Um, these are for $29.99. Um, I've seen this a lot at a lot of Kroger's. I'm curious to see if they've sold through a lot of these Philodendron Pink Princess. Um, when I first saw them, they had better variegation, but you know, that's just me being very picky. And you can see that their floral um, department has tons and tons of Philanopsis orchids. I wanna go pan in and show you the details of this. I love Philanopsis orchids um, just because their blooms remind me of some faces. It's kind of like pansies as well, the way they, um, the the bloom looks like it looks like a face and you can see there's some purple ones right here and one of my favorite plants is this particular peperomia this is a peperomia san marino and what i like about it is this is a very lush very full um plant for four uh, you know for 9.99 i mean i'm almost tempted to purchase this plant today um just because look at how full this plant is it's literally popping out of its planter and it's also happy because you can see those rat tail looking um stems those are actually the blooms of a peperomia um i don't have any peperomia growing in my collection except a peperomia guinea um i might add this to my collection the thing is when i've had it in the past I ended up getting spider mites on it. So I think like the watering or maybe just the conditions I had wasn't the best, but it's something I might revisit. That's a really cool looking Peperomia San Marino for $9.99. That's not a bad um, price at all, especially how full that is. It's probably the most full Peperomia I've seen. And then right over here is an aluminum plant. I love aluminum plant. I love Palias. I'm actually gonna be trying to collect different types of Palia. This one's for $9.99 and it's super full. Now remember with Palias, you wanna pr um, prune them back so they stay um, pretty full and not leggy. And then this is a Peperomia obtusifolia 
Love this as well. I'm still looking to see if I can get a great price for that. The variegation is beautiful. And then we've got some more assorted plants right over here. Now this is a plant find that I'm glad I was able to um, steer you guys in the right direction. This is a um, Alocasia stingray. This is definitely an un uncommon alocasia and one that you would not expect at a grocery store. This is for $13.99 and you can see there is a little baby corm. Actually, there's two of them starting to sprout from this alocasia. Love the leaf shape of the alocasia. Definitely looks like a stingray. There is a little bit of a leaf damage or a bend on it, but you know what? If they were to reduce this price, I would definitely buy this alocasia. It's gorgeous and I can see, I've seen a mature version where it's really gotten large in size and then obviously we've got some miniature roses here we've got some assorted kalanchoe um, that's the thing about grocery stores um, their house plants or indoor tropicals are mixed with their floral department so you will see a lot of flowering plants i want to show you guys flowering plants in addition to like the tropical aeroids that you would see like this one right here is a six inch um Epipremnum Arium Marble Queen Pothos. This one's for $19.99. Now, I think for of all of the plants, I think $19.99 for a six inch planter is a little bit much um, when you can buy these for like $16.99 at like a local plant nursery store. So, um, that's, you know, I like comparing prices, and this is the reason why I love doing plant shopping videos. Um, my plan foldies and if you're new to the um, channel my name is Richie and I call my viewers and subscribers plan foldies but um anyways my plan foldies let me know what you guys think of the plants I've shown so far I know you've seen a lot of these plants like this one right here is an aglonema red siam you know that I love aglonema and even if this is for $19.99 I still think this is a beautiful plant love the pink stems aglonema are so underrated i wish people would actually make this a trending plant um very easy to care for i mean you don't you just want to make sure that the soil dries out completely before you water it and um give it bright indirect light it can tolerate lower light conditions now this is a beautiful epipremnum arium golden pothos this one is for $19.99 in a six inch planter look at the variegation of this one this one actually has very good variegation for a golden pothos um golden pothos are one of the easiest house plants to grow they are easy to propagate as well you can literally take node cuttings off of it stick it in water and produce many um, pothos and if you are starting house plants definitely get you a golden pothos you will not be disappointed you will not kill it the only way you could kill it is maybe overwatering it but it's even more forgiving than most plants when it comes to overwatering and i do want to show you this peperomia raisinette it is one of my favorite peperomias just because look at the texture of the leaves it literally looks like raisins love dark foliage plants and it's one that I might eventually get in my plant collection. It's one that I love featuring when I um, shop at Kroger. And the thing about it is, I know that I visit a lot of the same um, grocery stores. I do tr intend to try and diversify my content, but for all of my plant foldies to continue to tune into my live premiere chats, really appreciate it you guys mean the world to me when it comes to just engagement i love it when you guys are able to just um, chat with me in the live premiere chats we always have a plant party um a one hour plant party just because i try to make one hour videos of just me talking about plants i'm no not an expert when it comes to plant care but i will give you my insights and my personal experiences with plants so um hopefully we can continue this streak and you can see right over here, we've got some more philodendron, pink princess marbles. This one actually has some good sectoral variegation. Um, philodendron, pink princess, I would consider a common philodendron just because we're seeing a lot of that in the market. Um, there's a lot of tissue cultured philodendron, pink princess. So, you know, I would say be picky with the variegation because philodendron, pink princess, their variegation is really based on the original genetics. Now the next uh, plant shopping um, video we're going to do is a grocery plant shopping out in HEB um, in Frisco, Texas. So HEB is a local Texas um, grocery store chain, um, mostly seen in Houston and Austin and Dallas. And this particular one actually has a large outdoor section. So I'm going to just spend a little bit of time. You can see that they've got some roses available. I used to have a rose garden. I might actually show you guys some old footage of my garden. So if you 
you guys want to see some of my old footage, please um, put that in the comments or let me know in the live premiere chats. But one plant that struck me is this variegated hibiscus salsa dancer. Look at how beautiful the leaves are. I love pink plants, but this one has pink and cream variegation for a hibiscus and what i like about it is even if it's a variegated plant this one can t tolerate full sun so i am definitely going to purchase this hibiscus it reminds me of where my family is from which is the philippines we call hibiscus gomamela and these um, hibiscus really go grow well in the philippines tropical weather is is ideal for it but i think i could grow this in a planter and then overwinter it when it gets freezing cold just because I am based in North Dallas so a lot of these plant shopping videos are based um, in North Dallas so if you are new to the channel you will see a lot of these grocery stores big box stores are out in North Dallas here is a variegated yellow um, um, yeah yellow lantana sorry um, and I would like to say that lantana are like weeds. They grow very well in our hot weather. They're very dr uh, drought tolerant. So that's something you can um, plant actually down in the ground for North Texas. And then right over here, as you walk into the entrance, these are for $9.97, a bunch of assorted cacti and succulents. Look at this one right here. This is trending tropical six inch grower. Um, look at how fuzzy the um, cacti air, um, look like and i like this one as well look at this other fuzzy one as well very precious looking um very delicate looking i don't have cactus in my plant collection i am trying to refrain from starting different types of plant species and genus just because i am one of the types that will say pick up an aglonema and want every single species or for instance if i get a kalanchoe i would want to get all of the kalanchoe blooms different types of blooms this one is a beautiful pink one for um a good price and then you can see there are some more kalanchoe here what i love about heb um, is a lot of the plants are sourced within texas a lot a lot of the um products at heb are all texas grown so that's really cool i really do want to support local businesses and local areas so support local and even though i do um, plant shopping videos i will show you guys local plant nurseries as well like um, for instance i hope you guys will tune into my austin um, plant nurseries Austin Texas plant nurseries series I am currently in Austin Texas um, for the weekend filming a lot of content so please stay tuned for that but as we're looking at this this is a philodendron pink princess by Max and Miles I think Max and Miles philodendron pink princess are the most healthy looking philodendron pink princess out there for $24.98 um, and then right over here we've got some begonia maculata at a grocery store and this one is also by Max and Miles. Max and Miles is actually the official um, HEB plant supplier. Really love their plants. Not a fan of their um, actual planters. Like I wish they would have just had like a solid white glaze plant that, you know, planter that was maybe a um, matte finish or even just a terracotta planter. I, I tend to go for a more minimalistic look, but the Philodendron Pink Princess, I'm sorry, are $26.98, which is not bad. And I do like that the um, Begonia Maculata they have available are a little bit more compact versus the trending tropicals that I would see at like Walmart or Lowe's. And I'm going to pan over here and show you a bunch of assorted succulents. Um, for HEB, they've got a, you know, quite a bit of uh, um, plants available from succulents to aeroids to just common house plants, uncommon house plants. So I really like that a lot. And it's just interesting that they do have cost of farm plants, but the majority of the plants are um, their own um, brand which is, you know, the um, premiums um, select by Max and Miles. They've got tons and tons of succulents. And, you know, it is a Texas um, grocery store, so it's not a surprise that you will see a bunch of succulents. That's something that could grow very well in the hot Texas weather. Succulents require pretty much full sun. They do best in that. And, and as far as like care tips, you don't really want to have water standing on the foliage because it will rot the leaves. And you definitely want to make sure that they're on the drier side when it comes Comes to watering like they can go for days months without watering um, just make sure that you monitor that over watering is a number one way to kill an, a succulent and this one is actually blooming those little rat tail looking things show the blooms i always find that interesting and whenever you see a plant blooming that means it's got the best ideal conditions it's mature it's happy it's healthy 
and this is a beautiful echeveria i think that's how you pronounce it i love the gradation of the lime green to dark green foliage and it's amazing how plants just have such a diversity when it comes to like different colors even different greens like look at this one this is a beautiful subtle pink one love that as well i love the leaf shapes and then just the shape of the actual succulent it's almost perfect in the way it um, looks it looks like a flower and I am a big fan of succulents. I just don't have any in my collection except for a variegated um, jade um, bonsai that I created from pre-bonsai material, material that I bought. Um, I am going to show you a local plant nursery that I love to go to. Callaway's Nursery is off of um, Highway 121 in, on Custer Road. Callaway's is a local plant nursery that is all over the Dallas-Fort Worth area. One of the best, um, best plant nurseries to go to. And you can see it's spring has come. And this is a snow fountain weeping cherry tree. Love this. Um, I would definitely add this to my collection. You know, I wish that these weren't blooming, but this is something that I might save my money and possibly plant next year. Um, I think it would do very well in my backyard space or even in my front yard. Unfortunately, some of my Japanese maples didn't really make it through this um, um, harsh winter. And the fact that I was growing Japanese maple in um, full sun in um you know facing south it just wasn't good but these um snow fountain weeping cherry trees are amazing and look at how beautiful the blooms are they give me japan vibes and i love um japanese culture and that's the reason why i do a lot of like origami actually to tell you a little bit about this channel if you're new is the um, channel's name grow folds comes from the origami origin so i originally created this channel for origami asmr so you will see me do a lot of origami paper crane tutorials i've literally got hundreds of them so if you get a chance i know you're here for the plant content but definitely scroll down and check out my older content it's all origami anyways um, aside from that random rant i did want to show you this epipremnum panatum albo love plants that grow up a totem most philodendron aeroids would love to grow up a totem and when you do that you will see that they will um you know size up in their leaves you will see the beauty or the true potential of the the plant because this is really how they grow in the wild they'll attach themselves on other trees and grow up and that's when you'll see the fenestrations and whatnot um, i am going to make this just a quick walkthrough tour for this local plant nursery but you can see they've got a variety of plants such as calathea calathea again um, i don't mind buying calathea at um, this location just because they have a variety of calathea and they have a really good return policy so like if the calathea doesn't really do well you are um you have an option to be able to return the plant as long as you bring the plant that's not doing well for a full refund no questions asked so like Callaway's has a really good policy and every time I do end up having to um, return a plant I ended up you know I end up spending more money anyways because I'll buy like three or four plants um, for every one plant that I return so it's not a big deal love the staff every single um, Callaway nursery that I frequent and there's tons of them within a 10 to 15 mile radius 15 minute radius um, I am able to just interact with the staff they're super kind and I am just very excited to see the variety of plants that they have available. Like, for instance, this is for $16.99. This is a heart leaf fern. Um, I want to add this fern. I don't have any fern in my collection. That might be my first one I might add. However, I might also add this. This is a black um, rabbit's foot fern. I see this often at big box stores, particularly Lowe's. And I'm, I'm not sure if it's a finicky fern somebody please give me the plant care tips if that's a fern that i can grow easily i'm afraid that i may not have enough humidity and that's the thing when it comes to plants guys as beautiful as they are um just make sure you do your research and know that you have the plant um requirements i do want to show you this so this is a big leaf bronze um leaf begonia so this is another wax begonia these um begonia are meant to grow outside or that's what i was told however you can also grow them inside i am growing some wax begonia i ended up buying like a four pack from walmart but this is another begonia i might end up buying just because i want to see if i can grow it i'm more interested in getting those beautiful red blooms and i want to pan over here these are some beautiful impatience as well impatience can really tolerate um hot weather so i like that for texas and then look at this beautiful um, petunia right here that's speckling on the petunia is really nice 
Um, I remember as a child, we actually grew petunia in flower beds. I actually grew a lot of um, flowers as a kid and you know, I've, I've have, I have a diverse love for different types of plants, like even the geraniums. Look at how beautiful the pink foliage is. Not the foliage, but the blooms are. And I want to pan over here. Look at this beautiful magnolia. So I wanted to do saucer magnolia. This one is an actual black tulip magnolia. Um, but for some reason, like either the heat of the um, summers, just they just don't do well. I ended up buying one, but it didn't do well. So it is no longer in my backyard, but I want to show you a bunch of these dormant um, peach trees. Now, peach trees are really grown, or at least I'm growing them not necessarily for the fruit, but more so for the cherry blossom looking blooms. And you can see right over here, this one's already past its blooms. It's starting to get some green leaves, but spring is here and I'm very um, excited to show you different types of um, plant nurseries and even botanical gardens. Like I plan to go to the Dallas Fort Worth Botanical Garden to see if I can go into the Japanese garden and show you some of those beautiful Japanese maple and cherry blossoms but I do want to show you this this is a, um, a tree I might end up buying next year this is a crimson cascading weeping peach tree what I like about it is the blooms are a nice um, pink color versus white look at how beautiful the blooms are and I love the fact that it's weeping and its maximum size would be like eight feet so that's not a big tree and it would be something that would fit very well in my front yard um, to possibly like replace my Japanese maples and the good thing about peach trees are they require full sun and since my um, house faces the south this would do very well and it would definitely give you some um, you know give my curb appeal some um, spring interest I love um, being able to grow plants that just showcase the seasons and look at this beautiful looking bloom i would love to see this in full bloom in the next couple of days i have a variegated um peach tree that i will get some footage on but i'm gonna go walk past this right over here you can see a bunch of these hanging baskets of impatience flowers gorgeous looking hanging baskets um, it makes me want to grow a bunch of flowers um, i did end up throwing down some zinnia seeds and they've started to germinate and sprout so very interested to show you that as well i really should be doing some more outdoor gardening but with youtube plan shopping videos a demanding salary job that i have um, it's just a lot and i'm trying to balance it out and make sure that i actually have time for myself um, but speaking of time for myself i actually am excited to be out in Austin, Texas. The amount of plants and just the nurseries they have are amazing. It's a little bit different from Dallas, so I am so excited to show you that footage, but I'm also excited to show you um, coleus plants. So coleus plants in the Philippines are called Mayana plants. These grow so well, and my grandmother grows them like weeds. They are so easy for her to grow. Um, my grandmother is actually the source of my plant interest. As a child, she showed me how to um, take care of plants, and she's really the one that has the best green thumb. I would love to feature her in a future video. So plant foldies, let me know if you want to see my grandmother and see her plant collection because it's amazing. And um, I am planning on trying to grow a couple of coleus plants indoors and actually train them to be um, tree-like or bonsai-like form. I saw an Instagram um, account that just grows coleus and they're amazing. But I keep going back to this wax begonia right here. The leaves are large. I love the dark foliage. And I also love the fact that it's a profuse um, bloomer. So I like that a lot. You know, some people grow begonias obviously for just like the leaf textures but this one i would grow just because of the blooms you know i'm getting into having blooming plants in my indoor space um, my indoor azaleas are doing amazing they're about to max out on their blooms so i would definitely want to get that on camera and show you that and i also want to show you this these are um, oxalis or um, purple shamrock look at how beautiful they are there's one that's um, purple we've got a dark or purple one with some more like variegation and then we've got the green ones as well. These are all very happy just because they're blooming. 
Um, I definitely want to return back to this um, Callaway's soon because the uh, manager told me they will be receiving more trucks. They've been getting two trucks um, almost every other day. So I'm interested to see that and see what other plants they have. And then you can see right over here, we've got some wax begonia. This one is in a large six inch planter, very developed. I'm not 100% sure what the price is, but look at how gorgeous the blooms are. Love pink blossoms, love white um, blossoms love flowers in general i feel like they give me um they just make me happy i'm not sure if you guys are into flowers like i am i just love plants in general and look at this these are the green wax begonias right here and these have white blooms i would love to grow those as well just because the green is very much healthy lush and they just give you that energy when you look at plants and that's the thing about my plant shopping videos i know that i spend about an hour just kind of ranting rambling about the same plants but I just love the fact that Plant Foldies, my viewers, all of you guys here, you guys give me the time of the day just for me to talk about plants and show you plants. I feel like whenever I make these videos, it's more of just you and I hanging out, you're walking around side with me, and we're looking at plants together. So I hope you guys continue to enjoy this kind of content. Um, if you haven't already, please make sure you are hitting the like button. I can't stress to you enough how much it helps me. It actually motivates me to make more plant videos. So if you want me to continue making these videos, please make sure you guys are hitting the like button so that way I can push out daily content. Um, YouTube rewards, I'm engaged and that is the easiest way to do so if you want to support me monster thai constellation this large one is for 499 dollars truthfully that is not a bad price for a fairly established monster thai constellation now mind you i heard that there were some monster thai constellations being sold at lowe's in humble texas i saw a post about that so you already know i frequent lowe's pretty much every single day so if I run into one, I don't mind spending $125 for those large Monstera. And you know, I'm going to get that on film. Here is a beautiful Aglonema. This is a pink one. I wish I knew the actual um, plant ID for that. But I am also getting into Aglonemas being grown in hydroponic situations. Um, so for those who don't know what hydroponic means, it's basically growing um, plants in straight water and no substrate. And you can see here, Tretzcanthia Nanook for $9.99 very lush and full Tretzcanthia nanook something that i would um grow and i actually ended up buying one of these from um Callaway's just because their nanook or their Tretzcanthia are very um full they're not leggy it's one that's easy to propagate i'm actually getting ready to propagate my original one that i bought from plants and planters and you can see this is another heart leaf um, fern for $6.99. Actually, I would end up buying this um, size to start out with or, and, you know, the um, Black Rabbit's Foot Fern. Here is another Epipremnum Panatum Albo. Look at how beautiful it is growing up a totem. I believe this one is for $149.99. And then we're going to pass by some gorgeous looking maiden hair fern. Now, maiden hair fern, I actually grew years back didn't do well for me just because I didn't give it enough um, high humidity. It ended up crisping up. And the thing about it is with maiden hair fern, they're gorgeous looking now, but if you don't, if you underwater them, they will definitely crisp up. And then right over here, we've got um, a beautiful aglonema um, white rain. So that's not an aglonema golden Madonna. White rain is what it is. And then I'm going to um, swing by over here and show you um, these Monstera Thai constellations. So these ones are actually in four inch planters. This is the first time I've seen um, this at Callaway's. This one's for $59.99. So if you want a smaller um, Monstera Thai constellation for a decent price, you can go to Callaway's. And again, if you end up killing it, as long as you hold on to your receipt, you can um, bring back the dead plant and return it. So there is a lot of benefits of shopping locally, especially at Callaway's. This one is a nice looking Monstera Thai constellation. Look at how beautiful the variegation is. I am almost Almost tempted to spend $89.99 to get a smaller juvenile form because my Monstera Thai constellation growing in my living room is about five to six feet tall and it's got heavy fenestrations but I kind of want to get a, um, a Monstera Thai constellation that isn't as fenestrated just because I love the heart-shaped leaves um, let me know if you guys are also into just like juvenile plants now this one is a very interesting Monstera Thai constellation do you see the stems here 
highly variegated i would only buy this plant just because of the stem interest not necessarily the um the leaves but look at the stem interest highly variegated highly cre uh, the cream variegation this is actually a really nice looking um you know unique looking monster tie constellation for $89.99, um, you know, I don't want to spend that kind of money because, again, I end up spending so much money doing these big box plant shopping videos daily. And then this is my big box store plant shopping video at Home Depot in the Colony, Texas, which is out in Louisville, Texas. I'm also out in North um, Dallas, but I haven't been to this Home Depot in forever. And honestly, when I went to this Home Depot, I wasn't really into looking for plants. So I'm curious to see what kind of plants they have. If you made it this far into the video and haven't already, please make sure you're hitting the like button. And if you haven't subscribed, please subscribe to my channel. That is how you will get notified for my live premiere chats. And for subscribers, I am going to start putting exclusive content only for subscribers. So please make sure you are subscribed so you don't miss out on that. But we're going to walk in here. And as always, most Home Depots have have like a whole section where they have plants at the entrance and you can't go to a big box store like Home Depot and not see some Philanopsis orchids. These Home Depots have had a lot of like blooming flowering plants at the um, front of their store. We've got some um, African violets right over here. These are almost finished blooming, but I do like the, the velvety leaves of African violets. I have one in my collection and it's a variegated green on green African violet. Um, I have pictures of it on my Instagram. So if you haven't already followed me on Instagram, please follow me at Growfolds. That's where I will post stories of my personal life, my personal plants, my plant finds, and you can DM me directly. I will I respond to pretty much everybody that um, reaches out to me. And you can see that with some cyclamen. Beautiful looking anthuriums right over here. These are for $18.98. Or no, these ones are for $12.98. Um, these are the smaller versions. This is the typical red one right here. What I like about anthuriums is not necessarily the blooms, but how waxy and shiny the, the leaves are. I think they're amazing. I would love to see an anthurium that has actually like albo variegation if those exist. And this one is actually one that I would find. This is a, con to me, this is considered an anthurium plant find. Love the dark foliage um, blooms right over here. And I love that it's a large size already. This one is for $18.98. They do require bright indirect light with anthuriums, but this is one that I would buy and then I would convert it to a hydroponic situation. The roots are very extensive in um, anthuriums and I would love to actually buy one of these. I, I won't buy it today just because again, I am trying very hard not to spend a lot of money on my plants, but more so not to inundate my household with hundreds of plants that I wouldn't have time to take care of. But this is one that I may come back for and put into a beautiful fish bowl watering, you know, water hydroponic situation. Cause look at that, I love dark foliage plants. That's something that if I ever do my house plant tour that I've been promising you guys for quite some time, I would definitely want to feature all of my dark plants. But this, look at that, look at the leaf of that too. This brings me so much joy, guys, you don't even understand. I would love to see um, an anthurium in a um, bowl. I actually ended up converting one of my anthuriums I bought at Green Acres um, Nursery and Supply, which is a local plant nursery out in Irving, Texas. If you haven't already, please definitely watch that um, local plant nursery tour. I ended up buying an anthurium there and converted it into a hydroponics and it's doing amazing for me. I love looking at the roots. I love looking at the blooms and this one would be an amazing candidate to convert into hydroponics so let me know what you guys think i know uh, when i did a poll everybody was saying just to grow them in soil but i really want to try a different medium of growing um, i'm tr i have some plants growing in um, leca some transcanthia um, propagations i did and now i'm doing hydroponics because like look at this is actually what I find interesting too. So this is an Epiprimna arium snowy morning, or that's what um, Proven Winners is calling this um, pothos. I do find this variegation interesting. It's got more like yellowish aurea variegation. Normally I would say this is like a Marble Queen pothos, but Marble Queen pothos would have more of like a creamy variegation that looks like a more of a hybrid of like an aurea. I was actually tempted to buy that just because I like the variegation. And you can see this is another Epiprimna arium 
Aquarium Jade. This is the Proven Winners H2O Bowls. Um, this is actually what got me interested in doing hydroponic plants. Like this small bowl is for $14.99, but I figured if I buy starter plants and buy the bowl, like say from um, Hobby Lobby, actually Hobby Lobby is a craft store that I bought a bunch of bowls for there for 50% off. You would save more money making your own hydroponic plants. Um, this is a Calathea um, fish bone right here. This one desperately needs water before it dies. But look at the, um, the leaves of this. I think Calathea would do amazing in hydroponics because then you don't have to worry about whether you need to water the Calathea or not because it's going to stay watered. And um, I just think it'd be interesting. So that would be something I would um, try to venture out and do eventually. We'll see about what kind of Calathea I might do. I might actually convert my Calathea White Star into a hydroponic situation, um, but we will see. This one is also for $14. This is um, one that I've eyed out for a while. I kind of regret not buying it when it was first um, released out in the market because I saw more um, healthy looking ones. And then over here, we've got a beautiful looking philodendron um, sun red. Um, it's another proven winners release. This one's for $19.98. So it kind of is in the same price range as like a trending tropicals cost of farm philodendron. Love that as well. I love how the new leaves um, unfurl like a bright orange red. Um, tone and then obviously we are looking at some monstera adansonii a very common looking monstera i like that it's um, also the wide form i'm not as big of a fan of the narrow form but needless to say you will find that at any big box store you'll see a lot of monstera adansonii and then right over here we've got a calathea lewisa nice looking calathea this one's got a little bit of browning on the leaves um, I am assuming this has been out at this Home Depot for a while, but for $19.98, um, it's got some beautiful green on green variegation um, for a Calathea. And then we've got a um, Ficus Elastica Burgundy um, for, by um, Proven Winners Leaf Joy. This one's for $19.98. It's a little bit more pricey. If you actually buy at Trader Joe's, which is a grocery store that I see often at um, in the North Dallas area, you can buy bigger um, ficus elastica plants for $12.99. Um, this one is a Calathea Feather Touch. This is actually one I haven't seen often, but you can see the leaves. Look at how gorgeous it is. They literally look like bird feathers, and I like how the leaves unfurl before it hardens. It's like a lime uh, neon color. Um, unfortunately, this one is also starting to decline in its health. It's starting to crisp up and brown up. And that's what happens when you don't give Calathea like the best optimal conditions to grow. They require um, higher light, brighter light, higher humidity. They're just a little bit more of a diva plant. Now, um, Ficus Elastica Taniki is another beautiful um, rubber tree plant. This one does require a lot of bright indirect light or it can actually take full sun for me. I grew one out in full sun outside in hot texas weather and it did not brown up or crisp up and then right over here we've got another um anthurium this one is that dark anthurium and you can see how full and lush this one is i'm going to take this down and show you look at that would you buy this um anthurium just for the black balloons let me know in the comments my plant foldies or even in the live premiere chats if you're into this plant I definitely am into this plant. I will buy this plant eventually and I will put it in a hydroponic um, growing condition. I think a beautiful, um, very um, simple um, fish bowl would look really nice to display that. And then right over here, we've got some philodendron Florida greens. I have one that I need to repot. Beautiful looking um, philodendron Florida green. This grows very vigorously and they're very easy to propagate as well. This, however, will not meet, um, re it's reach its maximum um, potential unless you let it grow up a pole, a trellis or something because it needs to grow up something in order for the leaves to really size up and mature. Like right now, this is semi-juvenile leaves. Um, this one is for $29.98. Um, I have one and I'm actually thinking of um, propagating a bunch of the nodes so I can make it a more full plant but you see there is a second one right over here these honestly are fairly looking and you know fairly healthy looking philodendron Florida greens um, I just wish 
Home Depot would clearance out their plants or reduce their plants versus just letting them die. Because I think that if they do that, they would actually sell through some of these plants. You know, when I think about plants at big box stores that just get unhealthy and die and end up in the trash, you think about the plastic containers, the trash that it creates, the amount of effort and time it took to grow the plants. It's just a whole sad situation. And I know that I'll um, ramble about it, but it's really something I feel passionate about. And then right over here, we got Epipremna Aria Marble Queen Pothos. So you can see that this one has some really light variegation. It almost reminds me of a Snow Queen Pothos. Um, I will show you a Snow Queen Pothos, which is basically a highly variegated um, Marble Queen that doesn't have cream variegation. It's mostly white. Um, I found one in a hanging basket at a local Austin nursery tour. So be sure to check that out when I release it. And then this is another Alocasia right here. This is one that I intend to add to my collection. I would buy it from Home Depot just because it's a really nice price. Love the veining of the leaves. Love how this Alocasia has more narrow leaves. And then the purple undersides are really nice as well. Um, it's something that you know, has a, a lot of different leaf interests. And that's the thing about Alocasia, the diversity of um, Alocasia plants, it's amazing. And then right over here, we've got a philodendron birkin. I would say this is another philodendron that I would consider common. It used to be uncommon, maybe even considered rare three to four years ago. But now you can find them at a big box store, grocery store, convenience store, plant pop-ups. You can find it everywhere. And what's interesting about philodendron birkin is the, um, the, the striping and the variegation varies. Like that one that I picked up originally was more variegated. This one is more green. So I'm actually curious to think if a philodendron birkin um, variegation, you know, the striping is really more influenced by the amount of light it gets or if it's just the original genetics. But I'm going to put these side by side and show you that the first one right on the left has more white variegation. I've even seen um, philodendron um, birkin actually have full 100% full white leaves. I think when it comes to variegation, you want an, um, an, a balanced amount. I think this one, the left one, actually has a good amount. This one is a little bit more green, but I would assume the greener version would probably grow a little bit more vigorously than the highly variegated one. And then we have another philodendron burke in here. This one's a little bit larger, less variegated. That one is for $19.98, and that is another Proven Winners um, release. And you can see we've got just more plants here. That's the thing about Home Depot. I'm curious to see if they're going to get even more tropical plants as it starts to warm up and spring comes around. Um, because these plants, I think, have been around for a while. Like this one is a um, elephant bush succulent. I've seen this hanging basket. And these are some string of teardrops for $12.98. Um, these are by Smart Plants. So Smart Plants actually sources out a lot of the um, succulent type plants, cactus plants. Look at that right there. I don't have any string of anything. The only um, hanging basket of succulent I have is a wax ivy that is doing very well for me. And actually, I need to water it. I haven't watered it in over a month, but it is not dying at all. I actually sun stressed it to where it's got purple and pink variegation. And when you think about hanging baskets, these hanging baskets aren't the best looking, but you will always find a Vigoro um, fixture. Vigoro plants actually has a bunch of these hanging basket plants. You've got some um, Monster Edinsonii, some Hoya Canosas. And then right over here, I actually ended up buying this plant just because it was super healthy at another Home Depot out in Prosper, Texas. This is a Ficus umbolata. So whenever I look at like Japanese plant collectors, they have some gorgeous looking Ficus umbolatas that they've trained as a tree, an indoor tree. They've like bent the trunk and it was really cool. That's something I want to eventually do with my Ficus umbolata is wire it up so it could actually have curves and bends like, like a bonsai tree. And then we've got a bunch of um, different types of plants here. They, they're all jumbled up. You can see that that's another Ficus Elastica, just a green version. We've got a Trade Scanthia Feeling Flirty. I have a smaller one by um, Proven Winners. I thought it would be more of a vigorous grow, but it's taking some time for it to really grow. Um, it's another plant that would be easy to propagate in water. And then we've got a bunch of Philanopsis orchids right over here. So lots of plants to look at um, plants that i've seen already plants that i don't mind watching and staring at like this one right here i am really tempted to really just buy this plant now but 
Um, I decided that I would hold off on it. It is a plant. These an blooming anthuriums would be something I would put in a hydroponic situation, but we will see what that looks like. And then we're gonna go walk outside and check out the outdoor section just to see if they have any plants here, any more tropical plants. Again, I haven't been at this Home Depot in a while, so I'm trying to give you guys different Home Depots and big box stores just to see what plants they have. And you can see this is a new shipment of anthuriums. It looks like they got some more of those anthuriums. Look at how healthy and lush these leaves look. Look at these leaves just unfurled. They haven't even fully hardened yet. I love that. Um, anthuriums for me have grown very easily, at least the blooming ones have. And we've got some more um, Philodopsis orchids here. I'm always surprised about how many Philodopsis orchids you can see. I just don't know um, how they just, you know, mass produce those. And then we have some red tulips right over here. Spring is around. I would buy tulips though that weren't um, in bloom yet so they last and then you can see that this is the order of plants that they received you know I'm pretty nosy if you're gonna leave out paperwork like that for the public to see I am gonna show that right there but um, this one hasn't even been um, brought out uh, in merchandise yet and then we're gonna walk over here and you can see that their um, outdoor plants are starting to fill up. I'm seeing a lot of hanging baskets of ferns so I don't know if those particular ferns are meant to grow outdoors and then right over here, we've got another fixture with a ton of like tropical house plants. So we've got some Syngoniums, we've got some Epipremnum arium or Pothos, hanging baskets, we've got some Hoya carnosa, but I haven't seen these full lush hanging baskets of um, Syngoniums. Look at how beautiful the pink leaves are. Very nice looking Syngoniums. Syngoniums are easy to care for. They're easy to propagate. They grow like weeds. If you grow them up a totem pole or moss pole, their leaves will get large and they'll actually change to more of a trilobe. If you grow them in a hanging basket like this and let them trail, they will trail, but their leaves will get substantially smaller. So it's interesting. If you let it grow down, it will um, get smaller. If you let them grow up, their leaves will get larger. And I've seen some very large looking leaves. Right now, these syngonium are more of a semi-juvenile form. The mature forms, um, they get like tri lobes it's really cool and then right over here we've got just a nice green hoya carnosa um, love me some hoyas i saw a bunch of these out in austin and then you know when i think of hoyas that's one type of plant you don't see a lot of diversity at when it comes to big box stores like you might get lucky and see some some you know a couple more but for the most part you will just see hoya carnosa you'll see a hoya carnosa crimson princess Hoya Carnosa Crimson Queen, but that's really all the Hoyas you will see. And you can see that is another Marble Queen Pothos. Um, decent variegation. You know, with her Marble Queen Pothos, this is the one um, Pothos that if you don't give it enough bright indirect light, it will revert back to green, and that would just end up being a um, Epipremnum Arium Jade. This one is um, another, um, I would say this is more so a jade pothos at this point, even though um, it's probably being called a golden pothos. There's not a lot of variegation for it. And then we've got some more Vigoro plants right over here. So Vigoro sources out a lot to Home Depot. And these are the typical ones that they you will see. You will see some ponytail palms. All of these plants that I'm about to pick up are gonna be for $14.98. Um, not a bad looking um, ponytail palm. It looks super cute actually. I don't have interest in growing one, however, just because I feel like palms in general are not really my cup of tea. It's not something that I'm really interested in, but you know, it might be something you're interested in. And that's why I like showing you plant full these different types of plants. And then over here, we've got some Sansevieria. I want to get more familiar with different types of Sansevieria cultivar names. All I know is these are snake plants and they're marketed as being easy to grow but truthfully i don't think they are you know they they are meant they can tolerate lower light conditions but the watering is what kills me and that's probably why i ended up killing some snake plants they say you don't have to water it as much but if you don't water it it also gets like dry rot so not sure about that this is a chinese evergreen or an aglonema and if you always watch my videos, and thanks to those who are regulars, especially in the live premiere chats, you know I'm gonna show you an Aglonema Silver Bay. 
there's no way I'm going to do a plant video and not show you an aglonema and an aglonema silver bay. The, this aglonema is one of my favorites because not only is it easy to grow, it can get very large. It can get up to two to um, three feet in height and width um, over time. It is a slower growing plant, however. And then right over here, we got an Epipremna arium neon pothos. This one's for $14.98 again. And I do love neon looking plants. Like the yellow leaves are amazing. Look at that. You can actually propagate it. It looks like it's overwatered. And the thing is, it's in a catch pot. So all of that water sits. So that's one thing I will tell you. Whenever I go to a big box store, if I have a water bottle, I will water the plant. If the water is over um, watered, I will dump the water out so that the roots won't rot. I don't know if that is actually saving the plant, but I care enough about the plants to try to do my best um, and do my part. And then right over here, we've got a Hoya Carnosa, just a green one. I actually might end up getting just a Hoya Carnosa green version. This is for $14.98 by Vigoro Plants. Um, definitely like that. I love the texture of Hoya, but what I'm more interested in, in is to be able to grow a Hoya and see if it could bloom for me. I've got two different types of Hoya. I have a Hoya Carnosa tricolor and a Hoya Carnosa Crimson Princess in hanging baskets right now. And then this is another um, Aglonema Silver Bay. This is by Nature's Way. So this one is in a, um, a, a ceramic planter. It's going to be a little bit more expensive. I believe it's like for $22. And you can see that there are some pups starting to grow. So that's the cool thing about Aglonema. It will actually get um, thicker and clump up as it matures because more shoots will come out from the mother plant. So um, I'm hoping that happens with some of my um, aglonema. Some of my aglonema have actually started to get a little bit leggy. I don't know if I just want to repot the plant so I can plant the stems a little bit deeper. That's another way to um, not make it look as leggy. But you can see here, this is another ZZ plant. Very easy plant to take care of for $8.98 by Nature's Way. These ceramic planters are readily available. Unfortunately, I'm not into these planters that they have. I don't like shiny glaze planters. I like matte finishes. I like stoneware planters. I like um, just very neutral colors for my um, plant aesthetic. And then we have some dehydrated Calathea um, Dotties right over there. Um, they just definitely need some water. And then we've got some really nice looking Syngonium. Unfortunately, I don't know the Syngonium plant ID for this. Maybe it's a Syngonium, some type of illusion. But what I like about it is the leaves are this like mint green color. And then the subtle pink veins on it, it's just really precious to me. I'm a fan of it. Not sure if you are fans of Syngoniums. Syngoniums fell second in my favorite types of plants to grow. Aglonema are my favorite just because they have such diverse leaves and the color is just stunning. But Syngonium are a close second because I've always been into that. And uh, uh, an interesting fact about me is my first indoor house plant was actually a um, Syngonium white butterfly. I think I was in fourth or fifth grade when I ended up getting that, or maybe even third grade. I remember that. And we actually grew it in the bathroom and it still did okay. So like um, for low light conditions, it did tolerate it, but I know that in hindsight, it probably would have done better, obviously in bright indirect light. And then right over here, we've got another Calathea lancifolia or what they call the rattlesnake Calathea. This one is for $8.98 by um, Nature's Way. Um, this is another Calathea that can get very large. I want to steer away from putting more Calatheas in my houseplant collection just because they are a little bit finicky. Like they're gorgeous to look at when they first come from the store. But after two to three weeks, if you really don't stick around for with the plant care, it starts to brown up, crisp up and die. So like... That's just a diva plant. Uh, there's just some pros and cons when it comes to plants with beautiful foliage. Um, Calatheas especially are just super needy. And this is another Sansevieria right over here for $8.98. Nice looking Sansevieria. Again, I'm not as into snake plants. I used to want to collect a bunch of them. There's a couple that I would add to my collection. One would be in, um, a San, uh, Sansevieria La Rubia. Very high yellow variegation it's really cool and i want to show you this dormant um japanese maple this is an ace or palmatum coral bark or what you would call a sangukaku maple um, i love the red um, bark that it has when it's in during the winter and it has some 
beautiful lime green color for its leaves and then this is a typical Japanese maple blood good so when you think of like Japanese maples and red um, coloration this is usually the color and you can see that it's starting to have some buds swell up so um, this is the best time to grow Japanese maples right before they actually open up and bud up um, I have a couple of Japanese maples in my backyard that I would like to show you guys. So plant foldies, if you want to see my Japanese maples, please leave in the comments or in the live premiere chats. I can make a special video for you as well as some of my cherry blossoms that I have growing in my backyard. That's something I could do before my house, my indoor house plant tour. And we passed by a bunch of Dracaena marginata. Some of their um, tips are browning though, so that's not the best um, Dracaena marginata I've seen. And then we're seeing a bunch of snake plants. We've got some more dormant Japanese maple. This one is a blood good Japanese maple. This particular Japanese maple can actually grow very large. It can go get up to 20 feet tall. It would take forever, several decades, since um, Japanese maples are slower growing. And then we obviously have a bunch of um, Majesty palms right over here. Majesty palms are common and you can see these often at big box stores, grocery stores, convenience stores, plant pop-ups, garage sales, they're everywhere. I'm being facetious, but seriously, you will see Majesty's palms everywhere. And I'm just still curious to see if there's just a high demand for it, if they're easy to propagate, just because I don't see a lot of people really growing that in their house plant collection, but I could be wrong. And then right over here, we've got some Calathea Makayanas. These are actually nice looking Calathea Makayanas. They're actually a nice large size. These are by Nature's Way, and these are for $29.98, which is not bad at all. Um, just because the leaves are already large, they're developed. You know, Calatheas can be a little bit slower growing. And then right over here, we've got some Alocasia Californias. I have a variegated version of this type of alocasia that I need to repot. I will eventually show that as well, maybe on my Instagram or create like another video. But as you guys can see, this Home Depot, it's a decent Home Depot. I wouldn't say they have the best plants. I wish they had more plants besides, you know, the common ones you would find like ponytail palms, majesty palms, you know, your Calathea Makayanas. You can see that's a Spathophyllum or Peace Lily right over here. But you know, I'm not complaining because Sometimes just looking at common house plants is all you need to make your day better. Um, and then just creating this content for you guys. Um, I hope you guys never get tired of just tuning in to my plant shopping videos because you can see that I do try to feature different types of plants like this one right here I haven't seen yet, but this is for $15.98. I don't know the plant ID, but I found it quite interesting. And then obviously just the mixed Japanese maples. I do plan on showing you guys a special nursery that I visit out in Fort Worth called Metro Maples, which pretty much specializes in Japanese maples. So if you like outdoor gardening and you love Japanese maples, stay tuned to my channel. Like I said, again, I'm trying to diversify my plant content. I am now showing you guys some more of these assorted succulents, even though I don't know anything about succulents and um the plant ids this one though i do know this is a um a hen and chicks um assorted succulent for 6.98 you can see that the hen is that big one right here and you can see that they've got a lot of little babies and what is really cool is you can literally chop up all of those little babies put them on top of soil take a spray bottle and lightly mist it and then it will just propagate and root itself and you can literally produce that I think that this succulent is a vigorous grower as well and it can literally become ground cover. Um, I think that's really cool because I mean, it does look like ground cover already and I like the fact that it can easily propagate. So that's the thing about plants, my plant foldies is I like plants that I can reproduce and propagate. I think propagation is so therapeutic. It's so satisfying. It's fun to share plants with other people. Like right here, you can get this little plant here, snip it off of the mother plant, and then just stick it in some soil, mist it, and it will propagate itself. And then you can see right over here, this is a fuzzy looking cactus. And don't let it fool you. It looks like it's like a cocoon almost or like a silkworm cocoon um, because look at how white and fuzzy that is. Um, this is also by Smart Plants again. Um, this is uh, some type of euphorbia, or no, it's not euphorbia, um, but it's some type of cactus that I think is super cool as well. The fuzzy looking white cactus, um, I find adorable, super cute. 
I mean, all of these succulents are actually getting me tempted to like actually start buying succulents. Um, I am really trying hard not to start that because once I start that, I already know myself, I would be obsessing about it, wanting to get all sorts of um, species and varieties. And you can see right over here are a bunch of grafted um, cactus right here. I am not a fan of this though. I am not a fan of somebody painting a bunch of cactus. This is the cosmic um, succulents. Not a fan of that. I think it's kind of tacky. You know, I, I, I'm not a really a fan of that at all. I am a fan of all of these assorted succulents. I think the different um, textures, shapes, colors, and varieties are cool. I will say that these succulents wouldn't do as well indoors unless you can provide like a bright light for it just because they thrive more so in full sun. Look at this Kalanchoe teddy bear. It's got fuzzy. Um, you know, this is a Kal um, Kalanchoe. When you think of Kalanchoe, or at least for me, I think of the blooming um, floral Kalanchoe you see at grocery stores with all of the blooms, but this one is also a Kalanchoe. I didn't realize Kalanchoe were succulents, so I thought that was really cool. And look at this um, cool looking succulent right here. This one is another um, type of like living stone succulent. Look at that. And I've actually seen that one in blue, which I think is super cool. So you can see that this Home Depot has some decent amount of succulents. We're gonna walk over here. I'm just gonna take a little gander and show you some of their flowering plants. Um, I love flowering plants. I have some growing from seed. I have some zinnias. I might actually try to grow some marigolds from seed so I can make some marigold tea. It's really good for your eyesight because of all of the beta carotene you can get from the petals. But you can see right here, we've got some geraniums, very nice red geraniums. We've got some cyclamen right here. I love um, pink blooms on the cyclamen. I also like white blooms on the cyclamen. But what I also like about cyclamen is not necessarily the flowers. I've said this before in all of my other videos. It's literally the um, variegation and the shape of the leaf. The shape of the leaves of cyclamen are a perfect heart shape. And then we've got some hanging baskets here. We've got a bunch of like daffodils in the background, but you can see there's just a bunch of flowering plants. Even shopping at night, it's really relaxing just because there's not a lot of people I have to avoid from getting on the camera. And then right over here for $1.98, we've got a bunch of wax begonia, nice looking wax begonia. Um, definitely a fan of this one and something that I would be really into as well. Nice looking wax begonia. It's also a profuse bloomer as what I've read. I've actually seen one at a botanical garden where it was like three to four feet tall. It is more of like a um, upright growing begonia and it had so many blooms. So that's my goal is to be able to grow um, this wax begonia outdoors to get it really large and then be an eventually um, bring them indoors. But we'll see. I'm actually more attracted of the fact that it's just got dark foliage. I ended up getting a, a white blooming one just because I thought white blooms against the dark foliage would really be nice. But then I'm not against getting a pink one as well. That's the thing about me and plants. It's not like I could just stop at one type of a begonia. It would be I would need to get more begonias. I did want to show you this Glocka pendula or this like weeping um, blue atlas cider um, um cedar tree i actually have a neighbor that has a mature one and when i say that it grows um large it does grow large but it's such a cool looking shape i just wanted to pan over there and then these are a bunch of like gardenias that are available to purchase gardenia smells so good they need more acidic soil um i am curious to see if i can grow a gardenia indoors i mean i feel like if i can grow indoors um indoor azalea maybe gardenia might do well for me indoors but we will see that's a nice looking um bloom it looks like a, a white rose um again gardenias like acidic soil so definitely make sure that if you are going to grow um a gardenia shrub that you amend the soil and make sure you put things and make it more acidic because it will do much better for you you'll get more uh more of a healthy plant it will grow more vigorously you'll get more blooms it's just very good for the plant and that's the thing about soil types if you do your research you want to make sure that um the soil that you have is suitable for the plant so some plants 
require fast draining so a lot of the aeroids the tropical aeroids and just indoor house plants we look at they want fast draining soil but some plants um that like to stay on the moister side might want more more um organic matter that keeps and retains moisture so that's the thing about growing plants more research and then for us to grow together and learn together that's why i always ask for like um plant care tips right over here we've got some cordyline hawaii tea plants these ones are um ready to go and look at that look at how large that is look at how beautiful that um pink variegation is among the the magenta purple tones i really like that a lot and you know i wish i could grow cordyline indoors but when i have in the past they always end up getting spider mites they are very much spider mite prone I did buy one from Walmart for $5.84, a smaller one that I plan on growing in a hydroponic situation. But needless to say, what a beautiful looking um, cordyline plant. I saw some from Walmart as well that had like the compact version. Um, if I find one that's more healthy, I might buy it and see if I can grow it indoors. And then we've got some more Epipremnum Arium Jade Pothos, $14.98. This is just a green form. Um, nothing wrong with the green form actually it's probably going to um, grow much faster for you and that's a plant that i would say if you are new to house plants buy that pothos that is the easiest plant to grow and then right over here we've got a croton mame these are large ones that they haven't um, put out there yet i love crotons you know people say crotons it's either you love them or you hate them i love them but i don't think they love me back just because i overwatered one and it just dropped its leaves and i don't really have the patience to like wait for it to grow back so i ended up gifting it to somebody who wanted to rehab it so it's with somebody else now and then right over here we've got another jade pothos by vigoros these are for 14.98 and then we've got some alocasia polys right over here for um, $14.98. The thing about Alocasia is if you're gonna buy one, you might wanna buy one when they first get restocked just because it doesn't give them, give them enough time to decline in health. With big box stores, sometimes the plant um, care isn't the best and some plants just decline just like those. Um, you know, I've noticed that with Alocasia specifically. And then right over here, we've got a Hedra Helix, guys. You already know you were going to hear me say Hedra Helix um, or Hedera Helix. Um, I was saying that incorrectly for the longest time, but I like um, Hedra Helix or Hedera Helix. Those are English ivies. It's a very challenging plant. I've stated that in my previous videos, but um, if you can grow one indoors, kudos to you. And then we've got some blooming bulb plants right here. We've got some yellow tulips actual um color for tulips that i love the most it's yellow tulips they remind me of spring they remind me of easter they remind me of just freshness i love yellow tulips and it's re really nice to see that and i want to pan over here because it looks like some of the soil disappeared but you can see that these are growing from bulbs um i've seen a lot of um tulips being grown in a hydroponic situation where it's literally a bulb in a, um, a bowl of water and you can see the roots and everything i thought that was really cool saw those a lot at like grocery stores like kroger and um heb but you can see that these are the tulips that haven't started to bloom yet so if i was going to buy one i wouldn't buy the blooming ones yet i would buy the ones that haven't bloomed so i can enjoy the blooms a, a little bit longer and then speaking of blooms, we've got some peonies right over here for $12.98. They've got different types of peonies. So again, with peonies, I am not 100% sure what their um, plant care tips are, if they require full sun or more shade. What I do like about their leaves are one, their leaves kind of look like weeds. Two, their leaves are a waxy shine. And three, it looks like their type of propagation would be more so from cuttings. Like I feel like you could cut a stem, stick it in water and it will water propagate but that's just me assuming i'm not 100 percent sure i do ne definitely need to do my research but if you're a viewer watching this video let me know what the plant care tips are for peonies this is something that i might try to grow outdoors in my landscape i just probably need to do more research i always talk about research and just knowing your plant care so before you buy a plant my best advice is to always look at the care tips really acclimate yourself familiarize yourself for the plant care tips you will have a higher success rate in growing plants you know a lot of people will say i don't have a green thumb 
But what really is a green thumb? A green thumb is somebody who has the time invested for the plant, knows what the plant care tips are, knows the lighting condition, knows the watering condition, knows what type of fertilizer to use, and then most, um, most importantly, just having the time to upkeep it. Plants are not always going to look perfect. Like I am very um, guilty about like not getting rid of dead leaves or cutting away dead um, edges. And those are the little aesthetic things that you could do that can make you a green, you know, to give you a green thumb. Everybody's always learning. Even the, the professionals have struggles with their plants. Um, I am going to pan over this um, last part of the video. And this is just all of the hanging baskets again. Um, it's really nice to see a bunch of hanging baskets. I'm excited that I've been able to grow some hanging baskets in my home. Found a command um, strip that can grow, um, that can hold up to 33 pounds. I have yet to see any of my hanging baskets fall. And you know what the good thing is? I didn't have to drill holes into my ceiling. Even if I own my home, it's one of those things where I just don't want to, um, you know, drill holes into walls and ceilings. So check that out on Amazon. Um, they do sell those command strips. But as always, my plant foldies, thank you again for tuning in and watching my plant videos. Stay tuned for my Austin series of plant nurseries, and I will see you on the next one. Bye.